President Donald Trump is entering Hell Week as he prepares to deal with his new Democratic Congress. And, of course, Congress has introduced articles of impeachment. My name is Ruben Jay, and this is the Ruben Jay Report. Now, we all knew that this day was coming. We all knew that Donald Trump would one day have to face dealing with a Democratic Congress. Now, the only good thing about this is that there's still a Republican-led Senate. But the Democratic-led Congress is going to make Donald Trump's life a living hell over the next two years. And at the same time, they might give him the 2020 election because they are going to be all over the place. And they're going to make sure that they do their best to fight Donald Trump at every possible turn. And they are also going to try to strike him through Congress. Last week, we talked about uh, Congress introducing a bill to to basically abolish the Electoral College system and why that's a terrible idea for many reasons, not just the fact that it elected Donald Trump, but because eventually the Democrats are going to lose by whatever system they put in place to guarantee that they win, and that's going to be considered unconstitutional or, or non-effective or whatever terms they're going to use. We also talked about the Democrats introducing articles or uh, a bill to limit the president's pardoning power and basically saying that he couldn't pardon himself or someone in the family. Now, no votes on any of this stuff yet, but the most important thing and the biggest key to what people are talking about and really what's going to decide if Donald Trump has a real chance of winning the 2020 election is the articles of impeachment that have been filed or been brought up. I'm not sure if they've been filed yet or not officially, but they are pushing for articles of impeachment. And we'll get into that in just a second, but I just wanted to say that today's show is brought to you by this YouTube channel. So make sure you click subscribe on our YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash the Ruben J, but also like this video on Facebook where it's at as well. And follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash the Ruben J. We're going to be doing these podcasts as a test uh, over the next couple of days just to see how people react to them. And hopefully we can build something going forward. But I'm really excited for this, so make sure you follow the Facebook page and follow the YouTube channel because we're going to be talking about a couple really big things. Later this week, I'm going to talk about uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I believe is how I pronounce her name, or AOC as the cool kids call her. I'll be talking about her later on this week as well, uh, as well as what a Nancy Pelosi-led House or uh, Congress means. So uh, make sure to subscribe facebook.com forward slash the Ruben J and youtube.com forward slash the Ruben J for more of the Ruben J reports. Now let's jump back into the articles of impeachment here that have been submitted to uh, to be considered. Representative Brad Sherman of California kicked off the action last week with his impeachment resolution. Basically going and saying that the, he was basically accusing the president of obstruction of justice. Now, this isn't the first time that we've heard the claim obstruction of justice from people on the left and the Democrats. But, you know, not and it hasn't been proven yet. There is no proof of Donald Trump uh, obstructing justice. I mean, you probably have more of a chance of of catching Donald Trump skipping out on a parking ticket than you do having him obstructing justice. So. Uh, Sherman says, I believe that obstruction of justice is the clearest and most provable high crime and misdemeanor committed by Donald J. Trump. He tweeted as he announced that he plans to try to impeach the president. Here's the problem with impeachment, okay? President Donald Trump, yes, is probably the uh, shady, shady guy. But he's pretty honest about his shadiness for the most part. He's pretty open about the fact that he's going to get things done no matter how he gets them done. He wants to get them done. And he's going to get them done one way or another. Now, he, at the same time, uh, will fight for what he believes in, even if that means... Even if that means bending the truth and, and sometimes even flat out lying about it, which I think every president like that, is like that. Barack Obama, you can keep your doctor. George H.W. Bush, no new taxes. It, it's all happened before. Uh, weapons of mass destruction, you know. I do not have sexual relations with that woman. You know, everyone has, has done that. And it's not, it's not the best excuse to lie. Using the fact that everyone else in that same office has lied before you 
as a way why you can lie isn't a great excuse. You know, it's this isn't the fifth grade where, oh, why did you hit Timmy? Oh, because Timmy hit me first. That's not a good excuse. It's never been a good excuse. It's never been a good excuse for me as a kid. It's never been a good excuse for my parents that never worked with me when my brother hit me or I hit my brother and, you know, they say, what happened? Oh, they hit me first. That's never been a good excuse and it's never going to be a good excuse no matter what part of the world you live in. And no matter what job you have or, or what status you have in life, it's that's never okay. So, But did Donald Trump blatantly obstruct justice? I don't think so. I don't think Donald Trump knows what obstruction of justice is to actually try doing it. I really don't. I don't think, I don't think the president of the United States sat in his office and thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to get James Comey to, to drop this Russia thing, you know, before it gets out of hand. I don't think that president Trump is sitting here thinking, I really need to do something about James Comey. I really need to get rid of him. I think James Comey was a flawed FBI director. I think James Comey uh, had an agenda with how he handled the Hillary Clinton investigation. I think James Comey had an agenda on how he handled his firing from the FBI. I think James Comey is a shitty person. But do I think that President Trump knew that? No, I don't think he did. James Comey likes to talk about the, the night that he and Donald Trump had dinner together and how he felt like the president asking him for his loyalty was the president's way of, of basically asking him to obstruct justice. Now, the problem with this is it's literally a he said, she said. You have James Comey, who for all intents and purposes, intents and purposes, might run for president in 2020. He essentially set up his his fall plan has seemed to be an attempt to run for president against Donald Trump. You have James Comey, who is a flawed character. James Comey is a flawed, flawed man. Then you have Donald Trump on the other side of things, who is just as flawed, if not slightly more flawed than James Comey but also the president of the United States. You have the two of them at dinner alone. No witnesses, no third party, no credible account of what happened. James Comey can say that Donald Trump tried to make a move on him and there's no proof. Donald Trump can say that James Comey tried to get him to confess to crimes that did not happen. There is no proof. James Comey's account of what things may or may not have happened at that dinner is not credible. So obstruction of justice by the President of the United States is not a credible claim. Now let's talk about what happens if the Democrat-led Congress does decide to go ahead and impeach Donald Trump. Donald Trump's base now has a new, renewed focus and reason as to why they are being attacked. As somebody who voted for Donald Trump, as somebody who predicted that Donald Trump, if he ran for president, would become president of the United States in 2011... As somebody who likes having Donald Trump as president, if the Democrats try to impeach him, it's going to give me another reason to vote for him. It's going to give me another reason to fight for my president. And it will give me another reason to continue to do things like this, a podcast where I go into detail as to why President Trump is doing a pretty decent job as President of the United States, despite the opposition of the left. All these articles of impeachment and this talk of impeachment, all that does for Donald Trump is give him just a little bit more gas to fight in 2020. He is going to use this as a 
as a, as a way to say they're not just attacking me and what I stand for. They're coming after you, the people of the United States. It's the same reason that he won in 2016. Donald Trump won the 2016 election because he was able to tap into the, the heart of America. And some people might take that as saying, oh, well, you know, he capitalized on the fears of Americans. Well, you know what? Every election, that's what people win and lose off of, the fear of people's emotion, the fear of people who don't have health insurance to vote for somebody who isn't planning on giving them health insurance, the fear of somebody who lives off of food stamps and government assistance they're going to vote for somebody who's going to guarantee that they still get that assistance. It's just how it's going to be. If somebody comes to you and says that they're going to try to change something that you depend on to make your life better, but change is scary, you're going to vote against them. Donald Trump found issues that were on the hearts of every American that gives a damn about this country. Border security, police safety, jobs, a better economy, Anybody who cares about these United States wants border security, wants police officers to feel safe, be safe, and be able to do their job, wants an opportunity for more jobs, wants the stock market to do well. Because if the stock market's not doing well, there are no jobs. If there are no jobs, there's going to be more crime. And if there's more crimes and the cops don't feel safe, they're not going to be able to do their job effectively. And border security is a key metric to safety in the United States. Border security is a key metric to jobs in the United States. Border security is a key metric to a healthy economy in the United States. And that's not me saying that immigration is a bad thing because that's what a lot of people think when, when you hear, oh, we need to build a wall. People think that you are assuming or stating that immigration is a bad thing. But let me tell you this, everyone who's listening to this right now, immigration is a great thing. Legal immigration is a great thing. Illegal immigration is terrible. But beside the point, that I just want to have a tangent there. Articles of impeachment are just going to help reelect Donald Trump in 2020. They have nothing on him. Let me tell you this. If Robert Mueller actually had something on the president, I don't think that they would be waiting until the last possible second to try to stop this president. Think about that. Unless there is a conspiracy to get this man, President Trump, in jail for a long time. Let me tell you this. If if it comes out that Donald Trump did commit high crimes and misdemeanors, I will be the first person to say, okay, yeah, well, he deserves to be out of office. But this, this, I don't want to call it a witch hunt because I think that's, that's being too generous to Robert Mueller. But essentially, it's, it's a witch hunt. It's people, they have they have identified a target that they want to take down, and they are going to do anything in their power to make sure that they can take him down. Nancy Pelosi has smartly stated that she needs to wait on impeachment procedures to see what comes out of the Mueller report, that she doesn't support, she's not openly supporting impeachment until they actually have hardcore proof that President Trump broke the law. And then they're also going to have to go ahead and prove and also get that through a Republican-led Senate, which I'm actually, if there if there is an impeachment trial and it does end up going to the Senate, I am a little concerned about how that's going to look. You know, the Republicans, I think Republicans in the Senate are all too willing to go ahead and throw President Trump under the bus just so that they could you know, have something to run on in 2020. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I don't think, I don't think articles of impeachment are going to succeed now or in 2020 or in 2022 or in 2024. You're stuck with president Trump. You're stuck with him. Thank God we're stuck with him. And that's really all I have to say. I mean, I don't know what else there is to say about this because you think about it, the next two years are literally going to be hell for the president. You have a a Congress who hates him. You have leadership who hates him. You have an FBI who openly hates him. Mr. President, buckle up. It's going to be a long two years. 
but it's going to be a great two years because America's agenda is going to be implemented with or without the Democrats. My name is Ruben J. This has been the Ruben J Report. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at the Ruben J, Instagram at the Ruben J, Facebook.com forward slash the Ruben J, and of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash the Ruben J. And if you're listening to this on Facebook, please, 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 please click that like button on this page as well. I will see you guys tomorrow.